Are you Let's ready? Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. We're here. I hate We're myself. reading. We're getting this book club. I wish oh I knew my how God. to read. I can't believe we finally know what Nishiki does. Wow. What a crazy concept because we're covering the chapters 10 to 12 in hit manga Kagurabachi. Oh my god. So we knew that black was ranged sword slashes and red was reversing sorcerer's techniques. Now we finally got the explanation. Instead of Nishiki just be awesome. It's Nishiki it's cloaks cool. all of your attacks in high density spirit energy. Which and makes your you punches, faster. your and your kicks and all attacks, yeah. Everything. Well, I mean, kicking is also used for running and your hands are used for sword slashes. Uh-huh. So at the end of the last chapter that we covered, he got hit by all of the lightning forever. Mm-hmm. So he's in a lot of pain. But he really wants to kill the guy because the guy wants to turn his father's legacy into, you know, the guy who made the the nuclear bombs. Mm. Um, so their fight has been going pretty well so far because they're both, you know, the, the main character's dying, covered in blood, covered in lightning, and can barely use his arms anymore. The other guy's perfectly fine. So it's a pretty even fight so far. Mm-hmm. And then he decides to be a dumbass and says, don't you dare talk about my father. And the guy's like, wait a second. Like, no one knew you were this guy's kid. They just the whole thought reason you were, you were a... safe was because you weren't this guy's kid. They just thought that you were some guy with the enchanted blade that no one knew about. They just assumed he had one of the six and they didn't know which one because no one knows them like he does. Mm. He can say all their names and all their abilities. No one else can do that. So that's why he was safe. But now he's out here talking about this is the seventh sword. And my dad made those swords. So now he's lost all immunity to any of this stuff. I mean, sure, he's a uh, teenager, but you'd think he was smarter than this. Yeah. I like the way that they draw him using the shiki of him turning into like Almost a fish. Like watery. Yeah, he moves a lot. Uh, and then, what, what's the, the bad guy's name? Sojo. Sojo. He says Ketsu, and he does what looks like ice. But, but... we know that Yui is ice. Um, we're assuming that Ketsu and the thing he's going to use in a bit are both just sorcery that he can use. I'm wondering if maybe Ketsu is just a combination of the two. Mei and Yui? Yeah. So we know that Cloud lightning. Gouger has three powers. Because, like, look at how they're But Mei combining. isn't back yet. Mei is still on cooldown at this point. It, just, it looks... It's a bun... Maybe it's stone. It, again, might not be the sword doing that. He is a sorcerer who knows how to use yeah. magic. The main character is a sorcerer who doesn't know how to use magic. But a lot of the people using the swords do just know sorcery. Yeah. We don't, we don't really know. So, fight goes on. The main character is going as fast as possible, doing his little sans eye. And the guy is so much better and so much faster than him that anytime he goes to attack... Like, he's just able to counterattack it perfectly. Until eventually, <laughs> the main character looks over and goes, Oh god, he, he just wants to fight me for the sword. That, I thought that meant that Char and Hina were safe. But the reason why he was able to do that was because he obviously had a bunch of other people helping him. And so he sees um, Char's leg sticking out of the car. And he just ignores the guy with the sword, goes to try and rescue her. I mean, he has proven that he's, like, at least a little bit faster than him. So all he's thinking right now is get the girl and run, which could work. But he also said that he had, like, very little left in him after taking that lightning attack, and he had to end it all in one strike. He wants to end it all in one strike because he's generated enough attention that the government is going to show up and apprehend him. As he says at the end of the um, ninth chapter, yeah, the government is going to show up soon. They're going to catch him, but I want to kill him before they do that. 
So if he just leaves and takes Char, they're fine. Because the government's going to, like, get him. There's enough time between um, the lightning going down and it coming back up for the government to apprehend him. Yeah. So him running away now is fine. <sighs> so he decides to jump into the car to try to save Char. Um, and the guy is like, oh, sick. Lightning's back. Gonna use that real quick. And then we see the government sorcerers show up. One of the government sorcerers puts up a stone wall in between um, Sojo and the car that Chihiro is going to. Chihiro's the main character. He's in the case main you character. you didn't know that. Uh, and then we get a view of all five of the government sorcerers who show up. We have guy with big hands, guy with gas mask, girl, didn't, didn't know this part, a girl with dumb pigtails. A dude with a Mosquito bird mask, mask, and then a guy with a Skrillex haircut. And glasses. Don't and forget glasses. the glasses. You called him a nerd. I did call him a nerd. And then we have the, um, we have, uh, Azumi. Azumi, the main Azami. government guy. And then we have Shiro. Shiba. Shiba, yeah. Those two are there as well. Shiba's like, all right, I'm going to go help out Shiro. Wait, if you move. He'll move. No idea what that means, but whatever. So then, while they're talking about this, and he's surrounded by all the police officers, Sojo says, Ko, K-O-U, and then just explodes. No idea what it is, if it's a sword thing or We're if it's a sorcery. We're pretty sure it's sorcery, because other people know about it. But they said that the sword can use three different things. Yes. And we don't know what the third one is. Yes. So. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's just wind, because it is the cloud gouger. So, you know, thunder, ice, uh -huh. wind, yeah, or water. Uh-huh. Who knows? Who knows? We'll know, eventually. Eventually. So, yeah, he's used four powers. He's used Mei, which is the sword, Yui, which is the sword, and then two we don't know, which are Ko and Ketsu. Ketsu put up a bunch of spikes, and Ko exploded. So he gets to the car, breaks in through the back, easily kills two of the three people in the car, reaches out for Char, and uh-oh. It's just her leg. Just her leg, which seems to be regrowing. Does that mean that there are, like, multiple Chars There's going to be there? an evil Char called Rack. Oh, that's a terrible Family Guy reference. Yeah. And so he sees the leg. He's about to grab it. And so instead, he grabs the one guy out of the three he didn't kill, pulls him out of the front of the car, puts his sword to his neck, and goes, all right, where's Char? <laughs> and he just explains the whole plan of cut up the little girl, put her in cars, and drive in separate directions. Because he can probably only chase after one of us. No. And they were right. So they, for some reason, knocked out Hanau. Oh, that is Hanau. I didn't realize yeah. that earlier. They knocked out Hanau, left her in the back alley, and then cut up the girl and walked away. Why did they leave her alive? It wasn't part of the plan. Whatever. They, they didn't know that there was another person, they're and they didn't, to, they didn't want to upset their boss. So. They're willing to cut up a little girl into pieces to confuse one guy chasing them, but they're not willing to kill some random woman in a back alley. Well, yeah, then they'd be bad guys. <sighs> so then he kills the dude he was interrogating. And is like, all right, I got to kill this guy. There's no way I can let him live. My dad's swords are in the hand of a monster. Exactly what I said wouldn't happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Shiva said he cast a ko. Yeah. Which, is which means that it definitely was sorcery. Yeah. And then I'm we go to Char in the back of the car with the bunch of people around her going, oh, my God. Her legs are actually going back. That's crazy. Which means they chopped off both of them mm -hmm. for some reason. They cut her up in multiple pieces. Yeah. Wait. We can't see her arms. Her arms might have been chopped off, but yep. her jacket is fine. Yeah. Sojo gets in the car with them. Uh, he's like, oh, yeah, there's no way I can master this in one week. His hand is shaking and throbbing. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, I need to understand the swords better. And then we find out, oh, by the way, 
the material is back at the base. Ooh, the material. And the plan is to surpass the main character's father. Whatever that means. Oh, and also they know the fact that it's a new uh, sword. Um, we don't know if Shoujo tells them, Sojo tells them that he's the, the guy who made Kunishigo Rukahira's kid. But he says we need to talk more. Yeah. So it, I think it's implied. Yeah. So now we know that for this arc, Sojo has to die because he's a bad person. Mm -hmm. The next chapter, chapter 11, starts. It's pretty much just more exposition. Just oh right i forgot uh chapter 10 how'd you feel about it uh yeah the fight kind of ended a fight that the main character could not win in any way but set up a situation where it doesn't matter really if he wins or loses like his win condition is set he can leave yeah the government's gonna show up and take this guy down in his mind and they didn't and they didn't yeah so like he set up his plan and he there acted were too on many it. People around. What? There was no one else there. No, Shiva said that he was gonna go in there and intervene, and the other guy with the glasses was like, "No, you can't do that. There's too many people." Did he say that? Yeah. Or something along those lines. Uh. Go up. We're in the city, and he's got an enchanted blade. We want to avoid a battle, if at all possible. They've already yeah. caused enough damage. Yeah, he's just talking about property damage. There's no people there. Yeah. Like, we get shots of the street. There's no one there. Yeah, that's They right. evacuated when that first lightning bolt went off. Yeah. Mobby. Uh, but yeah. Anything else about Chapter 10? No, really. Oh, okay. I liked it. I'd give it a solid, like... Seven out of ten. I thought it was like highly above average. I really liked it. Yeah, I'd say like six and a half or seven. You rate things so highly for how poorly you speak of them. My brain just don't work too good. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So chapter eleven starts with him in a hospital. The main character, Chihiro, in a hospital. Mister Kagurabachi himself. No, he's not the divine fishbowl. Hmm. He's been reborn. <sighs> Jokes, comedy, laughter. La, 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 la. They're in a public hospital. They could have taken him to a government agency, but they don't really want him to be known by the government because they've been hiding him for years. Because if they know that um, his dad, Kunishiga, had a kid, they'd most likely dislike him solely for the fact that his father created weapons of mass destruction which are now causing problems for the government. So we get confirmation that he now is alive, which is good. And we get confirmation that Char should be alive. Yippee! Should be. Uh, Sojo has Daten Seki. Daten Seki is the special ore that is used to create enchanted blades. And it's such a rare material. It's even rarer than unobtainium. Only 250 kilos of it are currently known to exist. Kilo what? Kilograms? <sighs> Kilometers? Oh, I thought you were going for a kilowatt joke. I thought about it, but no. Oh. So what Daten Seki is, is effectively an ore that is capable of holding more spirit energy inside of it than a sorcerer can hold within their whole body. Which is why Enchanted Blades are able to do so much crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. The problem with using Daten Seki outside of the swords is that it is incredibly toxic. You are effectively running your body on like nuclear energy which means that you have a lot of energy running through your body. The problem is, if you don't explode immediately, um, you just die of like high radiation poisoning. Yeah. And what makes the sword special is the main character's father has figured out a way to effectively turn the Daten Seki 
from highly radioactive dangerous material to something that can just kind of absorb your energy and amplify it by a ton yeah. which is why the swords are so powerful and considered man that's so crazy they used uranium to create weapons of mass destruction Never heard of that being done before. Wow, his lay swords lay killed people. <sighs> I love you. Bad joke. Ah, Minus true. one. So they kidnapped Char, who is the currently last known survivor of the Kiyunagi clan, who has the ability to regenerate from pretty much anything. And they're just shaving parts of her muscles and ligaments out of her body and throwing it into the vat that has the ore in it in the hopes of, I'm assuming, growing more of it? Or learning how to harness it. Because, like, if anyone else tries to use it, it's highly radioactive. But his dad found a way to use it without it being radioactive. But also, like... Oh my god, is you... his mama Kiyunagi? Who? The main character. Is his mom? If we're saying that the Kiyanagi are the only people capable uh, of utilizing the Daten, Daten Seki, and his dad is someone who was able to do it, are we trying to say that there's some kind of like blood wedding process that his mom probably took part in? He just has a jar under the sink, sprinkles a little bit on there. Mm -hmm. But also, I hate when they do this in different forms of media. Where people are just evil for the sake of being evil. Because they're like, wouldn't it be better to fatten her up so that we could get more uh, product out of her? And he's like, don't be silly. We just have to shave it multiple times. As long as she's not dying, she'll regrow anything they take out of her. So there's no point in fattening her up. But they, one, they could get more out of her They don't once. need more. Uh-huh. Um... But, like, if they have to, you know, cut out a certain amount, wait for it to grow back, and cut it again, uh -huh. versus, you know, make her gain a couple of pounds, then they could just shave it off all at once. But no, instead they're just making her suffer for the sake of suffering. How is she suffering? Like, how is specifically not fattening her up suffering? Because after she heals, she has to be cut again, instead of, like, having to cut her multiple times. Or, instead of... Only now, okay, hold on. I'm sorry. Do you think if she were to gain weight, that would be weight in, like, muscle? Go back up. Um, ligaments, muscles. I mean, I assume that they're just using, like, blood as well. No, they're, they're taking specific muscle groups, grinding it up, and throwing it in there. Not just blood. If it was if just we're blood, using her flesh, yeah, wouldn't it be more effective to fatten her up? Yeah. So like they're using her skin as well. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. I. I, I, I don't just, think it's just meant to make her suffer that they're not feeding her more. It's just like, why would you do that? Then why would they bring that up? The sole purpose of them bringing that up is to show, oh yeah, these bad guys are so bad, they're torturing children. Well, yeah, but they're torturing children even if they fatten her up, so I just don't understand. It's less torture. No, it's not. Okay, we're just not going to agree on this. Let's move on. Main character's sad because the girl's been in their custody for however long, and he knows that they're torturing her, and he knows that they're using her in some way to try to cultivate the Datsun Seki. So um, now he finds out that the government, a.k.a. the Kabanabi, are speeding up their plans to defeat Sojo because now they understand that not only do they have Cloud Gouger and another sword, they're also trying to cultivate Datenseki. Yeah. So that's a huge problem that the government needs to take care of. And so they want to bring um, Chihiro in as a consultant on the best ways to counter the enchanted blades because he's the only one that knows fully what they do yeah and then we get introduced to the five quirks given character character or quirks given a personality yeah yeah what, what that what was the thing you said earlier quirks given character yeah 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 
The bird guy likes echoes. He just likes being loud. The Skrillex haircut likes making fun of young people. No, that was the other guy. This is the blonde guy. Yeah, the blonde guy. Um... Likes making fun of younger people. Yeah, you said the gla guy with the glasses. Blonde guy. I said blonde guy. You said the guy with the glasses likes to make fun of younger people. Okay, then I clearly misspoke. Or the blonde guy likes to make fun of youngsters. It, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just kind of skipping over all of the goofy stuff because it doesn't don't really, really care about goofy contribute stuff. it. You know? Yeah. If you want to see the goofy stuff, as we've said since the first episode, this is absolutely a read-along thing where we just go over our theories and stuff. You really should read this. It's fun. Mm -hmm. We're just here to be along with you for the ride. <sighs> the, so The guy with the mask is all cool and collected. But yeah. What? No. Oh, down. No, he's not. It's, sorry, the guy with the gas mask. Oh, gas mask. Yeah, he's super straight-laced and straight man. Um, Chihiro's like, fine, I'll give you all the information you could ever want in order to make this operation a success on one condition. Let me join. I can help. And they're like, oh, hey, by the way, we don't care who you are or whose balls you came out of. Uh, we're not letting you come with us. We're you're a too, government agency. You're too injured and too inexperienced. You'd be a hindrance. No, they don't even care about that. But because we know that you'll just escape and follow us along That's anyways. That's way later. No, it's not. Yes, it is. They have a whole conversation before they bring that yeah, part up. Fine. You did. I'm sorry. I'm trying to contribute more than just, oh, yeah, uh-huh. You can contribute. Just, like, keep it chronological. I'm trying. Anyways. So the, he says, yeah, I want to join. They tell him, you can't join just because you're that guy's kid. And he, the straight lace mask guy is like, he did make sure not a single person died in a fight between two enchanted blades, which we assumed was impossible. And he just gives exposition explaining what happened in the fight. And he's just, yeah, I used my enchanted blade to absorb the lightning. And then the guy with the mask is just, oh my god, that's so cool. A hot-blooded American. Sorry, dude, not American. Not American. Shiba tells him, listen, you have some serious wounds and the muscles on your left arm are entirely shredded. You won't be useful for another month. Which, to quote... The Rukaza Ichi, the auction that's happening in the black market, is happening in a month. Yippee. Oh my god. Also, main character's left-handed, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure everything that he's done has been left-handed. He talks about the fact that his left hand was useless before this point anyway. So, I mean, if we go back... You, you gotta be chronological. He didn't say that yet. Yeah, he uses the sword in his left hand. Yeah. Who knows? I guess that's why he used it in his left hand, because it's not worth anything, so he can use his right hand for other stuff. For the extra sword. Mm -hmm. For the pocket sand. The pocket sand. Mm -hmm. um. uh, he finds out that he's been unconscious for five days, and he's sad that Char had to be tortured for five days, so he's like, all right, this has hardened to my resolve. I'm definitely going with you. And the government guys are like, well, our mission is only to kill the guy with the, the sword. We're, we're, sing that, kid. Who the fuck gives a shit about that? And then they're just like, but we know that you're not going to sit tight if we tell you to, so you're coming with. Effectively, he's saying you aren't allowed to help the government, but our mission isn't to save the kid. Our mission is to kill the guy. So while we're killing the guy, if someone were to hypothetically save the kid... We wouldn't care either way. Yeah. You know, I didn't really write in a lot of stuff in my notes for these three chapters. I pretty much only wrote in the Dot and Seki and the um, new names for abilities that could possibly be from the sword. But even without adding a bunch of new lore and stuff to it, I've really enjoyed these few chapters. These are really nice. They've really established him as a human, not just 
<laughs> I, they said that he... I think they say that later. Um, I'm trying to be chronological. I, my memory bad. Um, but they're just establishing him as a human being. He has flaws. He's not, you know, perfect. And he's just doing the best that he can, even though he's way more inexperienced than everyone else. Yeah. We haven't learned anything about the five sorcerers except what quirks make them up. I really hope that the lady's quirk isn't just that she's a woman, but considering how every other character in this series is just like one joke and then they build a character around it, eh. Uh, that chapter I'd give a four for personal enjoyment, but for like character development for a bunch of stuff, I'd give it like a seven. I thought it was a really boring chapter. Mm -hmm. because essentially all that we learned that was important was he's been out for five days and they're experimenting on her and the entire lore of Dutton they could have explained earlier but no they, they had to do it now they like um, to keep things hidden yeah yeah hidden more mm -hmm. um i like the guy with the big hands I, I thought that Wait, was, was he there I, he didn't have big hands is this the big hand guy I think it's the guy with the gas mask. Is it the guy with the gas mask? We don't see Is his hands. Is he sitting though. on his hands? Oh my god, the hand chair goes crazy. We never uh, get, get to it. see him from the floor. No, there it is. Or it could be the guy with... No, it's not the guy with the bird. Or the mosquito mask. It's not the guy with the mosquito mask. Okay, hold well, on. This is important lore. We gotta this learn is, this. We're... The, there's the guy with the gas mask. The chick, the Skrillex hair, the bird mask. Who's the guy with the big hands? There's the five of them together. Oh, it's the blonde guy. Oh, yeah, it is the, the blonde, blonde guy. The blonde guy has big hands. Y'all, I'll be honest, I kind of forgot he existed. You keep doing that. <laughs> you did it too. No, I didn't. Mm, agree to disagree. Oh, he's hiding his hands because they're so big. All right. Uh, so chapter 11. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. We uh, learned a lot. Do I get to give my rating? Yeah, I never stopped you. Mm, personal enjoyment, I'd give it like a two. Jesus Christ. I, I don't really like a... Lore? <laughs> Damn, can I finish my fucking <laughs> sentence? Um, I don't like just exposition for the sake of exposition just explaining things without anything going on uh, a lot of the stuff we already knew it just explained like little things that we could have already known um but for the sake of world building i'd give it probably like a maybe a five maybe or a six. five okay if I say seven, you're just gonna go. Oh, you're just using my rating. Yes. So I can't. I, I can't do that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I would say that. All right, chapter twelve. Ah. <sighs> uh, Sorry, I'm somewhere else entirely. I know. Um. So chapter twelve starts with the anti-cloud gouger team saying all right he hasn't evaporated since we left sojo so we'll find him eventually i will contact you when it's time for us to move out and then 49 hours after that last chapter by the way this is the longest in world time since um there's been a fight because like in the past before chapter 10 it was like a fight move somewhere else a fight move somewhere else a fight move somewhere else this is the first time he's actually like rested there were like three fights within like 10 minutes yeah. too and that was after the other three fights yeah and so 49 hours after he got woken up from his five-day coma he's in bed it hurts to move his left arm always was bad he asked how's the pain and he said it still hurts yeah but his left arm was already pretty bad I don't get what this panel is. Oh, that's him, the main character's dad, and Azami. They were goofing around when they were 18. 
but him he's been training like ever since and he's at a level of power that they were nowhere near when they were 18 because they were goofing off yeah that's why he calls him a prodigy also he calls his dick a katana yeah that's what i thought they were doing yeah he gets the phone call which means that they're ready to move out and take out sojo so he can go and save char char is being held in a dilapidated building being guarded by like swordsmen and sorcerers and there's a group of jokesters all talking about the fact that like damn we got like 20 sorcerers guard in this place there's no way anyone's getting in here what's the point of us being here considering we have all these super strong guys watching out we don't we probably don't even need all these people we're so far away and then we cut to a bathhouse where sojo is um washing up I don't know if you've ever looked at the screen that we're currently on, but that's Sojo. That is Bathing Sojo. in something that isn't water. Oh, Ooh. I wonder what's going to happen that causes that. Anyway, uh, he's thinking about the fact that the guy he fought was the son of the man he looks up to a lot. And the fact that his son is talking about, like, defeat evil and protecting the weak. And he's just going, no. There's no way the guy who created weapons of mass destruction would ever agree with the concept of protecting weak people. That doesn't fit my worldview at all. So then a group of people come in and are like, all right, we took the Datin, Datin, Datinsky? Datinsky. Datinsky. And we used it for our job. It made the job super easy. The problem is... Our sorcerer exploded after using it. And so Sojo's like, well, yeah, I told you <laughs> it was going to work, and then it would blow you away. Sorry that you had to find out you were the test subject. And so then they try to kill him. It just cuts forward to him bathing in blood instead of the nice waters that he was in before. Hot spring. So he gets up. And he's thinking about, like, all right, maybe the reason why I don't get what he's talking about is because I don't understand the Enchanted Blades enough. So he needs to learn how to better use it, and he needs to fight um, Chihiro again so that he can show him that his father's ambition was definitely mass murder. Mm -hmm. So the old lady gives him the sword, and he's all dressed up and ready to go. And it turns out the reason why he's been talking out loud this whole time is to the government agents that are outside waiting for him. That's a zombie. Okay, there he is. There's Mosquito Guy. Uh -huh. There's someone. There's uh -huh. the blonde guy. Uh -huh. The masked uh -huh. woman. Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah. I'm all warmed up. So they're getting ready to fight, and then we cut back to the group of jokesters talking about, like, oh my god, how crazy is it that that guy who went to go do something hasn't come back yet? And then they see a floating goldfish for some reason, and my favorite panel in the entire manga so far is right here. I can't explain this in words to you. You're just going to have to look it up. In chapter 12, so far my favorite panel. Pretty I love this bear. Stop, stop being mean to me. No. And then one of the guys at the table, just staring at the main character, gets a phone call. And the guy on the phone is like, ah, I'm going to have to call you back. I, I can't talk right now. I got, and we I cut got back, And we cut back to the main character sitting on the other side of the table from the guy who picked up the phone call. And is like, what do you want from me? You can also see that he's holding the whole sword in his right hand. Yeah. So, so what do you think of chapter 12? I thought chapter 12 was pretty good. How? Explain to me the difference between this chapter and the last chapter. Blood? There were implied fights, so the exposition riddle chapter that this one was, was better than the previous one, because this one has at least the pretense that there were fights in it. Yeah. Uh, no. Personal enjoyment, I'd say probably like a four or five, like right in the middle, maybe a little bit lower. Uh -huh. Um, 
that panel was pretty good. I'll give you that. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, everything's just implied. Uh -huh. We don't get to see anything happening. But lore building, I mean, oh, it's been what, like a week total? Yeah. Uh, unless them saying that they're ready, there was still more time after that, but. I mean, he had I, to get from the hospital, get dressed, and go there. But he's still got the bandages on his forehead, so. Yeah, but he's dressed in real people clothes now, so. Yeah. His, Probably his, like an hour or two after that, yeah. which doesn't matter at all. So, um, I'd say. I'd give it a solid seven. Mm. It's setting up to something big for a big payoff. We're, we're gonna get to see a nice epic fight between Sojo and the anti cloud gouger force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the anti cloud gouger task force. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about main character. Um, like he's supposed to be out of commission for a month, or at least just his arm is. His arm, yeah. So. Obviously, he can still use the blade, but if he's left-handed, you know, he's not going to be as good with it. So, I'm sure it's just mostly intimidation tactics and, um... Killing regular people, not fighting against sorcerers and people who have other enchanted blades? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... And I'm sure he has Shiba right behind him to help out if he needs it. He's just, you know, watching from a telescope ready to teleport in. Mm -hmm. What would you think of it? I, mean, I like you said it was your favorite panel. Yeah, I, as you can tell by the fact that I take notes every chapter, I love setup and I love world building. So this chapter and the last chapter were really good. And as I said, this chapter has my favorite panel of the entire manga in it. So for personal enjoyment, this easily gets like an eight or a nine. Uh, for like the quality of it, I'd give it like a seven or an eight. There's a lot of just talking to yourself in this chapter, which generally I'm okay with, but it can be overdone and they're doing it a lot. Um, so it's not a problem right now, but I can see it becoming a problem and that's why it's not higher than eight. <sighs> yeah. The beginning of a problem is still a problem until it is <clears throat> proof that it won't be a problem. Uh, I mean, it seems to still be flowing pretty well through the story, even as they're talking. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, mm -hmm. some people might get this the webtoon called The Gamer where it's just a fucking novel in every page, every panel with next to no payoff, just like okay guys, we're gonna do a big grand plan next panel, wow, what a fight that was but I thought you said you really liked that no, I like the payoff, I don't like the build up you literally said this was a better chapter because there was implied violence and it was a build-up. But there's also the, I guess not a promise, but maybe it's blind faith mm. that the next chapter is going to be great. Okay. That there's going to be a nice big payoff. You know, it, it's a series of steps, which they uh -huh. kind of did before, where it's like set up, payoff uh -huh. in a fight, tiny amount of setup, another fight, Tiny amount of I setup, can't wait fight. for us to read chapter 13 and you to be so upset because it's going to be them throwing attacks back and forth, but we're not going to see anything land or anything happen because they're going to throw an attack or he's going to attack them and it's going to cut back to them being in the hospital talking about and explaining what all their moves are, what they do, and how they're going to use them. Yeah, I'll, I'll be pretty pissed about that. I can't I'll give you that. Wait. Or I'll forget. True. I do have pretty bad memory issues. All right. So what do you think of the chapter? What I, I gave. All right. It's been a good podcast. <laughs> it's been a good podcast. It's been a good book club. I will yell again. All right. You guys have a. Oh, um. By the way, I just wanted to say. I'm being. If positive. you made it this far, don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. My hand is being held so I can't hit end and cut them off. And also make sure that you demolish that notification bell. Bye-bye.